بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدى حدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers, so let's continue from where we left off and uh, today's chapter is uh, completing uh, the sixth pillar of Iman or completing Iman by its sixth pillar here yeah, the sixth pillar as in res- uh, the belief in resurrection um, in, in the resurrection as mentioned here Khatimatu al-Imani bil ba'th which is the resurrection yeah, life after death being resurrected so the uh, the Sheikh starts off with he mentions uh, he mentions the Quran uh, he says so if when the people die whoever dies or when when the people die they will be resurrected and the evidence for that was the and that's from surah Taha, uh, verse uh, 55 <coughs> and if we go to the translation of, of, of the meanings, then uh, can have a look at that now. So thereof the earth we created you and into it we shall return you and from it we shall bring you out once again, i.e. Um, resurrection. So then the Sheikh he continues and he says here in this paragraph, he says, In taqala ila aslin akhir wa huwa al-iman bil ba'th أي أنه ليس المراد موت فقط نحن علمنا والكل يعلم حتى الكفار والملاحدة وزنادقة كلهم يعلمون أنه لا بد من الموت لا أحد ينكر الموت لأنه شيء محسوس لكن لكن شأن في البعث بعد الموت هذا هو محل النزاع بين المؤمنين والكفار البعث البعث بعد الموت وهو عياد وهو عيادة الأجسام التي تفتت وصارت رميما وترابا وتفرقت في الأرض تعاد وتبنى كما كانت لأن القادر على إنشائها أول مرة قادر على عيادتها ثم تنفخ فيها الأرواح ثم تتحرك وتسير من القبور إلى المحشر لقوله تعالى يوم يوم يخرجون من الأجداث سراء كأنهم إلى نصب يوفدون سورة المارج بس 43 so we'll just stop there for a second we'll just translate inshallah what the sheikh has mentioned to us so the sheikh says says so then the original author is moved to another foundation and that other foundation it is having faith or belief in the resurrection uh, the resur- uh, the resurrection i.e and is and it's not and the purpose of that is not just having belief in death only why because the sheikh explains he says here we know and everyone knows even the kuffar, uh, even the kuffar and the atheists and the uh, heretics, all of them, they know that that is that there's no doubt about death. Why? Because nobody, you you won't hear anybody uh, disavowing or rejecting death because it's a it's it's a thing that's felt, that it's seen, that's observed, you know. And so for that reason, you won't find anybody rejecting death. The, but the Sheikh says, oh, however, the affair, the point here is in the, resu- uh, the resurrection after death. 
being brought back to life after death, the resurrection. And the Sheikh says this is the point of uh, contention or disagreement, the point of disagreement between the believers and the disbelievers. That is uh, the res uh, uh, resurrection after death. And it is the bringing back of the bodies after they had decayed and, you know, decayed and dispersed into the earth, you know, and disappeared like that. Um, and it's bringing back, it's returning and bringing back the bodies. Yeah, and then uh, the, the Sheikh mentions here that the the one who is capable of bringing something to life in the first place is capable of bringing it back after its death as well. And so the Sheikh says that these bodies, they'll be, be brought back, they'll be resurrected and the souls will be blown back into them. Then they'll start moving, etc. And they'll move and they'll be moved, they'll move to the gathering place of, after the resurrection. Mahshav. And then the Sheikh mentions an ayah that we read in Arabic. So from Surah al -Maharij. So we'll go there, verse 43, and have a look at the meaning. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we are. The day when they will come out of the graves quickly as racing to a go. Yeah. So that's the proof for that. The Sheikh brings, and also the Sheikh brings another ayah here, which I'll, I'll carry on reading, and then we will we will look at that, inshallah. So then the Sheikh says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ كَأَنَّهُمْ جَرَادٌ مُنْتَشِرٌ مُهْتِئِينَ إِلَى الدَّعَى That's from Surah Al-Kamr, verse 7-8. to eight. So then the Sheikh, he says, لَا أَحَدَ يَتَخَلَّى فَهَذَا الْبَعْثِ حَقٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَهُ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَالْإِيمَانُ بِالْبَعْثِ هو أحد الأركان الستة للإيمان التي قال فيها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تؤمن بالله وملائكة وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشره فمن لم يؤمن بالبعث واليوم الآخر فإنه يكون كافر بالله عز وجل ولو شهد بأن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وَلَوْ صَلَّ وَصَامَ وَحَجَّ وَزَكَّ وَفَعَلَ طَعَاتِ فَإِذَا أَنْكَرَ الْبَعْثِ أَوْ شَكَّ فِيهِ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ كَافِرًا بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ So then in this paragraph, just towards the end of this page here, you can see my cursor, then the Sheikh mentions another uh, verse. And so if we go to, if we go back to the Mus'haf, look for the meaning here, from Surah Al-Qamar, verse 7 to 8. Let's go there. Let's read the meaning. They will come forth with humbled eyes from their graves as if they were locusts spread abroad, hastening towards a caller. So this is proof of, this, of, the, resur of the resurrection and then them being gathered in a gathering place, yeah? <clears throat> so then the Sheikh says, nobody, you know, that, you know, and nobody's, in a sense, is going to dis uh, and nobody will be left, basically. In this res uh, resurrection, everybody, every living person is going to be resurrected. It's uh, and, and there's no doubt in that. So then the Sheikh says, whoever, whoever uh, disavows or rejects uh, the resurrection after death, he is a disbeliever in Allah Azawajal. And, and the belief, the be having belief in the resurrection, it is one of the six pillars of Iman. And as we remember from before, when the Shaykh mentioned previously in the previous lessons, when we, when the Shaykh was talking about Al Iman and six pillars, if any of those pillars drop or they're not there or they're missing, you're a disbeliever. So you have to believe in all six. And if one of them is missing, for example, like this one here, in resurrection, then you disbelieve in Allah Azza wa Jal. And just like how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said um, in his speech, <coughs> he said that you believe in Allah and the angels and the books and the messengers and the, and the final day, the last day, the day of judgment. 
and that you believe in in the qadr of Allah in his good and his bad and and also the bath which is resurrection right so then the shaykh he mentions here so whoever doesn't believe in the resurrection and 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 the last day in then he says for indeed he is a disbeliever in Allah azza wa jal even if he says la ilaha illallah and even if he says muhammad rasulullah and even if he prays and even if he fasts and even if he makes hajj and even if he gives obligatory charity and does many many good uh, deeds and does many obediences to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he rejects or has any kind of doubt in uh, the resurrection in the last day he is a disbeliever and so obviously it's very important here that you don't that we don't fall into these mistakes these are major mistakes and after you know you don't want to fall into these kind of mistakes that's why we're learning this alhamdulillah so we don't fall into these mistakes and so we, none of our actions are lost can you imagine doing all all the hard work and then you're of this doubt or disbelief in this affair here it's all gone all your good work all your hard work it doesn't count for anything so so it's important that we learn these 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 important you know foundations of our religion safeguard our religion protect our religion and and thereby protecting and safeguarding uh, our our travel through this dunya so uh, then the sheikh he continues and he says uh, let me just before i continue let me just see there's a, an ayah at the top here is mentioned in the up, uh, in, in the header uh, okay um let's let's check over this ayah wa qulu ta'ala wallahu anbatakum min al-ardi nabata thumma yu'idukum fiha wa yukhrijukum ikhraja i think the sheikh is going to explain this uh, and uh, do a tafsir of it so we we may as well just because it's there we should we we'll go through it now uh, and then we won't have any surprises inshallah so uh, that's from surah an-nuh verse uh, 17 and 18 let's go there and allah has brought you forth from the dust of earth and that's from tafsir at-tabari volume 29 page 97 and the next ayah afterwards he will return you into it, the earth and bring you forth again on the day of resurrection i resurrection yeah so um then the sheikh he says wa adillatul ba'thi kathira minha qawlu ta'ala wa minha khalaqnakum ya'ni al ard hinama khalaq khulika adam alayhi salam ab al bashariya wa fiha nu'idukum ya'ni ba'd al maut fi al qubur wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra hadha huwa al ba'th so let's just stop there for a second so then the sheikh says there's there are many there's plenty that there's many evidences regarding the resurrection uh, and then the shaykh quotes uh, the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min ha khalaqnakum and from it we have created you i you know from the earth we have created you you know the uh, ayahs that we read previously and just now as well and the shaykh says meaning from from the earth and when adam was created alayhi salam the father of of humankind of mankind and then the ayah wa fiha nuidukum and in it we shall return you ai death meaning that you know uh, uh, when when death comes up uh, uh, reaches you you will be buried in your graves you will return to that earth yeah and then the other ayah that the sheikh mentions wa min ha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra and this is the resurrection so then uh, if we look at the meaning of this this is and and from it we shall extract you or take you out from it another time as in the resurrection the day of resurrection you will will all be brought forth will be taken out from the earth and resurrected just as in the previous paragraphs the sheikh mentioned and gives a description of that so the sheikh says that this is resurrection and these uh, verses you know they clearly shows here the starting and the return yes start how we started and how how we return right the returning And so then the Sheikh was I again he says minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nuidukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra so from it we created you yeah and 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 in it we shall return you back into the earth 
and from it we shall take you out again. And and this is um, uh, the proof here of resurrection for us. And the pre and the previous ayahs as well, all proofs for us. Uh, that some of the proofs that the Sheikh has brought, but there's many. So then we go on to the next section. And so the Sheikh he says, Wallahu ambatakum min al ard. So this is um, this ayah at the top here. The Sheikh will explain that now. So we, we read that in English. So he's break, the Sheikh will break it down. He says, Wallahu ambatakum min al ard. Hinama khulika min ha adam alayhi salam. Thumma yuidikum fiha ay bil maut wal kubur. Wa yukhrijukum ikhraja. Hada hu al ba'ath. Yukhrijuna min al kubur. Wa yasiruna ila al mahshar. قال تعالى قال فيها تحيون وفيها تموتون ومنها تخرجون أي تحيون على ظهرها وفيها تموتون ومنها تخرجون للبعث يوم القيامة. So then the sheikh is just uh, sheikh has repeated what what we uh, uh, what the sheikh mentioned in the previous paragraph. Uh, but there's a new ayah here which we will uh, go through the meaning of, uh, and that is from سورة الأعراف verse twenty five. So if we go there now and look at the meaning, inshallah, we will see. He said, therein you shall live and therein you shall die and from it you shall be brought out, i.e. resurrected. So so, so, so that's the uh, uh, the next uh, new ayah that the Sheikh has brought for our, for our uh, for the evidence base and for our own uh, study here. So uh, that's clear and clarifies. That's what the Sheikh has mentioned again in this paragraph. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, هذه أدلة من القرآن على البعث أيضا يوجد دليل أقلي من القرآن نفسه نفسه وهو أن الذي قدر على البداء قادر على الإيادة من باب أولى قال تعالى وهو الذي يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده وهو أهون عليه وله المثل الأعلى في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم then the Sheikh mentions, he says, Allah the Qadr ala ijad in Nasi min an adami Qadr ala yadati in ba'd al mawti min bab al awla, hada dalil sami yakali. So there's another approach here that the Sheikh brings just for our own uh, knowledge as well. And the Sheikh mentions here that he says that the evidence is from the Quran uh, regarding um, the resurrection, right? He says these are the evidences for that. Also, there is um, evidence. Uh, uh, an intellectual evidence as well from the Quran itself and it is that the one who is capable of bringing something about from nothing is capable of bringing back something that has already been created Do you get, if, you, if you understand what that means and the Sheikh says that <coughs> this is <coughs> more appropriate that if if, 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 if if something was created right from nothing zero, nothing, never existed then it was created. The one who created it can easily, it's easier to actually bring something back that was already created than creating something in the first place. So you see that, that it's less complex than what the Sheikh is saying here. So it's, it's, it's even more, easy, point being that it's easy to understand and it should be easily accepted by your mind that the one, if you believe that you were created out of nothing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you out of nothing then it's easy, easy for you to believe without any shadow of a doubt that I can bring you back once you decompose in the earth. And the Sheikh brings this from a different angle for our reference, Hafizullah. So uh, this is always uh, uh, something to remember as well, these additional evidences. So then the Sheikh continues, says, وَمِنَ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَى الْبَعْثِ مَا يُحْسَلُ لِلْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ بِالنَّبَاتِ أَنْتَ تَرَى الْأَرْضِ مَيْتَ لَيْسَ فِيهَا نَبَاتْ جُرَدَاء ثُمَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يَنْزِلُ عَلَيْهَا الْمَطَرْ ثُمَّ يُنْبَتَ النَّبَاتْ الَّذِي كَانَ حَشِيمًا مَيْتًا كَذَلِكَ الْأَجْسَامِ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَانَتْ مَخْزَنَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْزِلُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهَا مَطَرًا ثُمَّ تُنْبِتُ الْأَجْسَامِ وَتَتَكَامَلْ ثُمَّ تُنْفَخُ فِيهَا الْأَرْوَاحُ فَأَنْتُمْ تَرَوْنَ الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ تَكُونَ قَاحِلَةً ثُمَّ تُحْيَى بِمَا نُبِتَ فِيهَا اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى هُوَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا Let's just stop there for a second. 
So then the Shaykh says, yeah, and from the evidences regarding uh, the resurrection is what we see from the earth and what's obtained from the earth itself. So you see from the vegetation, for example, the Shaykh just mentions here, like the vegetation, crops and, 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 that, and, and, and the likes of that. They see a land that is dead, dry, there's nothing growing on it. It's clean, it's bare, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it descends, Allah sends rain upon this land. It gives life to this land and, uh, and from it, crops grow. Uh, and the Shaykh gives these kinds of examples. So uh, the Shaykh says that, and you can see from that, that, that there's life and that Allah gives life. And then, you know, that land, it dies and then Allah gives life to it again. You know? So th these are some of the examples that the Shaykh mentions. Then there's an ayah here that the Shaykh brings as well. He says in Allah's speech here, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَ الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَا الْمَاءَ اَخْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا لَمُحْيِ الْمَوْتَ إِنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ So what the Shaykh mentioned there, this is taken from this ayah. So if we go to the meanings, this is from Surah uh, Surah Al-Fussilat verse 39 Let's go there And among his signs in this That you see the earth barren But when we send down water rain to it It is stirred to life and growth of vegetations Verily he who gives it life Surely he is able to give life to the dead On the day of resurrection Indeed he is able to do all things So there's another evidence And from a different angle again So then the Sheikh says here فَالَّذِي قَدْرَ عَلَىٰ إِحْيَاءِ الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا قَادْرٌ عَلَىٰ إِحْيَاءِ الْأَجْسَامِ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا لِأَنَّ الْكُلَّ أَحْيَاءَ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ So then the Shaykh just summarizes by saying what he mentioned earlier that the one who can give life in the first place to something from nothing is able to resurrect and bring back uh, um, and uh, able to resurrect uh, after death yeah, and bring life to those again and give life to those again and resurrect them so then the Shaykh says in the next paragraph, he says, وَمِنَ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَى الْبَعْثِ أَنَّهُ لَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ هُنَاكَ بَعْثِ لَلَّزِمَ أَنْ يَكُونَ خَلْكَ النَّاسِ عَبَثًا أو خَلْكَ النَّاسِ عَبَثًا حَيْثُ إِنَّهُمْ يَعِيشُونَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُطِيعِ الْمُتَّقِي الْمُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَمِنْهُمُ الْكَافِرِ الْمُلْحِدِ وَالزِّنْدِيقِ وَالْجَبَّارِ وَالْمُتَكَبِّرِ وَالْعَاصِي كلهم يعيشون ثم يموتون دون أن ينال هذا المؤمن شيئا من جزائه أو ينال أو أو ينال هذا الكافر وهذا الزنديق وهذا الملحد وهذا الطاغي المتجبر على الناس دون أن ينال جزاءه. So then the Sheikh says so from the evidences with regards to uh, being resurrected or the resurrection is that. You know, if there wasn't, <coughs> if there wasn't a resurrection, the Sheikh says here, then it would mean, it would mean that we've been created for no reason, for no purpose. It, it, it would mean that then, if, if if that was the case, then it would mean the opposite. What is it that 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 there, there's no purpose to life? You're just there wandering around, uh, doing what you want. People do what they want. You know. Uh, and then they die, and it's and that's it. So the Sheikh brings some examples. He says, for example, like, you know, there there'll be a person, for example, with this description, uh, you know, an obedient, uh, a God fearing, God conscious person, a believer in Allah and His Messenger, and from them there'll also be those who are disbelievers, uh, uh, disbelievers in, uh, in Allah, uh, the atheists, for example, the heretics, the um, uh, are the arrogant ones, the sinners and the likes of that. All of them living their life and then they die. They live their life and then they die. Without being, uh, without, for example, the mu'min, the believer, uh, receiving anything for what he did on this planet. Uh, receiving a reward. And likewise, the other groups the, uh, from the disbelievers and the heretics and the atheists and, and you know, the uh, people who... Uh, uh, go beyond the bounds and the limits and the arrogant ones and etc that they'll just die and 
they won't be recompensed with their actions. So the Sheikh finishes that uh, with that uh, uh, in that paragraph, and then he continues. He says, "Fahal yaliku billahi an yatruk al nas hakada duna an yujazi ahl al iman bi imanihim, wa ahl al ihsan bi ihsanihim, wa ahl al ijram wal kufr bi ijramihim wa kufrihim." So then the Sheikh says here in the first three lines, he says, "So is it befitting for Allah? Is it befitting for Allah that He leaves the people like this?" Without them being recompensed, and obviously we know what the answer is. It's a rhetoric, it's a, it's a, it's a rhetorical question. The Sheikh says, so for example, the people of Iman, you know that the people are being recompensed and rewarded. For example, the people of Iman because of their Iman, the people of Ihsan, the good doers because of their good doing, the people of uh, uh, the the criminals, the ones who committed felonies and criminals, and the disbelievers, uh, uh, with the, won't they be recompensed with what they did? And then the Shaykh says, هَذَا لَا يَلِيكُ بِحِكْمَةِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى وَلِهَذَا قَالْ So then the Shaykh says, this does not be fit, is not befitting uh, 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 with the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Allah's wisdom is not befitting. And the Shaykh quotes an ayah, he says, uh, because of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَ So that's from Surah Al-Najm, verse 31. So if we go there, and we can see for ourselves, inshallah, verse 31, And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, that He may requite those who do evil with that which they have done, i.e. punish them in hell, and reward those who do good with what is best, i.e. paradise. So the Shaykh brings the evidence, uh, for what he's mentioned there. Also, he brings another ayah as well here. So the Sheikh says that this isn't going to be except during Yawm al Qiyamah, during the day of <coughs> judgment. And the Sheikh says, So, and then also within the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's some more. Uh, he will read all these now. There's quite a lot of uh, evidences here, so bear with me. So then the next ayah is أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَحُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ نَجْعَلَهُمْ كَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَوَاءً مَحْيَاهُمْ وَمَمَاتُهُمْ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ Surah Al-Jathiyah. We'll go through these one by one, inshallah, so we can follow along. Surah Al-Jathiyah now. Let's go there. Verse 21. Or do those who... Who, uh, or do those who earn evil deeds think that we shall hold them equal with those who believe in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, i.e. Tawheed, and do righteous good deeds in their present life and after their death, worse is the judgment that they make. So uh, th that's the ayah there. The next evidence, وَقَالَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الْمُتَّقِينَ كَالْفُجَّارِ Sur Verse 28. Let's go there. Surah Tusad, verse 28. Shall we treat those who believe in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, and do righteous good deeds as mufsidun, those who associate partners in worship with Allah and commit crimes on earth? Or shall we treat the mutakun, the pious, as the fujar, criminals, disbelievers, wicked? So that's clear as well from there. Next ayah, وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ So that's from Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 115. Let's go there and look at the translation. Did you think that we had created you in play without any purpose and that you would not be brought back to us? وَقَالَ تَعَالَى أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى أَلَمْ يَكُنْ نُطْفَةً مِنْ مَنِيٍّ يُمْنَى ثُمَّ كَانَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقَ فَسَوَّى فَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى أَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَى أَنْ يُحْيَى الْمَوْتَى So that's from Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 36 to 40. So let's go there. Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 36 to 40. Does man think that he will be left neglected without being punished or rewarded for the obligatory duties enjoined by his Lord Allah on him? 
Was he not a nutfa, mixed male and female discharge of semen poured forth? Then he became an alaka, a clot. Then Allah shaped and fashioned him in due proportion and made him in two sexes, male and female. Is not he Allah who does that, able to give life to the dead? Yes, he is able to do all things. So there's another proof, right? Clear proof. And then the Sheikh says, وَرَدَّ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِ الَّذِي قَالَ So then, then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, I think this is from the point of, in terms of the ayahs, then the opposite in terms of when the kuffar say the following. So, the, so, so this is a, a rebuttal of the kuffar, uh, a refutation of them. So the next ayahs, the Sheikh says, <coughs> the Sheikh says here, مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِذَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ بِقَوْلِهِ قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ وَهُوَ بِقُلِّ وَهُوَ بِقُلِّ خَلْقٍ عَلِيمٌ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْدَرِ نَارٌ فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ So that's from Surah Yasin as well, verse uh, 78 to 80. So if we look at that, verse 78 to 80, let's go back. Verse 78 to 80, so we go further back. And he puts forth for us a parable and forgets his own creation. He says, Who will give life to these bones when they have rotted away and become dust? Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He will give life to them who created them for the first time, and He is the all-knower of every creation. He who produces for you fire out of the green tree, when behold, you kindle therewith. So, that's the evidences that the Sheikh brought forward with regards to a refutation to those who disbelieve in the resurrection. Yeah. So then the Shaykh says, الَّذِي قَدْرَ عَلَىٰ إِخْرَاجِ النَّارَ الْمُحْرَقَ مِنَ الشَّجْرِ الْأَخْدَرَ الرُّطَبِ الَّذِي قَدْرَ عَلَىٰ هَذَا أَلَّا يَقْدِرَ عَلَىٰ إِحْيَاءِ الْأَمْوَاتِ So then the Shaykh is referring to these ayahs that we just read in terms of the, from Surah Yasin verse 80. Shall we go to 79? Let me just go back here. He who produces for you fire out of the green tree when behold you kindle therewith. So the Shaykh is bringing that. If, if that's possible, what? Obviously, Allah, what Allah can do, bring something out of nothing. Then surely He can bring you back. Yeah, when you have rotted, dispersed into the earth, bring you back. This is what the Shaykh is basically saying here, without making it too complicated, inshallah. And then the Shaykh, he says, we're getting towards the end now. We've only got a couple of paragraphs to go. We're almost there. Barakallah, Fiqh. And then uh, just a reminder, we've only got another maybe two or three lessons to go. We finish the book, inshallah. So then the Shaykh says, وَمِنْ أَدِلَّةِ الْبَعْثِ الْإِسْتِدْلَالِ بِخَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَالَّذِي خَلَقَ هَذِي الْمَخْلُقَاتِ الْهَائِلَةِ الَّذِيمَةِ الْكَبِيرَةِ قَادِرْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُعِيدَ الْإِنسَانِ لِأَنَّ الْقَادِرْ عَلَىٰ الشَّيْءِ الَّذِيمِ يَقْدِرُ عَلَىٰ مَا دُونَهُ مِنْ بَابْ أَوْلَىٰ So then the Sheikh mentions here again from a slightly different angle. The Sheikh says that so from the evidences of the resurrection is uh, uh, is evidencing it uh, uh, with, with the one Allah, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the heavens and the earth and created all of these creations you know, huge tall, vast big, etc if he can do that then he can easily bring us, humans and resurrect us and bring us back to life. And the Shaykh brings that again as an evidence. Yeah. So if if Allah, uh, of course, Allah has created all that which is greater than us. So it just makes logical sense as well. Obviously, we have all the ayahs there for us anyway. And from the hadith, but we also from uh, from your logical sense as well, that it makes sense. It would just make sense that that uh, that something that's of a lesser degree and easier. Of surely can be done. Yeah. So then the Shaykh <coughs> he says, Allah Taala, Awa ليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم أن يخلق مثلهم بلا وهو الخلاق العليم. وقال تعالى تخلق السماوات والأرض أكبر من خلق الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون. So here the perfect evidences that the, that the, uh, here now so. Um, 
we are on surah surah to yasin still so verse 81 surah to yasin here is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the like of them yes indeed he is the all-knowing supreme creator and then the final evidence from surah to ghafir verse 57 let's go there uh, and uh, we'll end uh, we, we, we're at the end of the lesson almost and this final evidence uh, is perfect timing was all by the shaykh hafizullah he says the creation of the heavens and the earth is indeed greater than the creation of mankind yeah most of mankind or not so uh, the evidence from the quran here as well the creation of the heavens and the earth is indeed greater than the creation of mankind yeah most of mankind do not know or no no yeah so there's evidence for that so then the shaykh in this final paragraph no, that we'll finish off on. He says, فَهَذِهِ أَدِلَّةُ الْبَأْثِ الَّتِي تُثْبَتْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُولِ وَأَنَّهُ يُجَازِي كُلَّ عَامِلٍ بِعَمَلِهِ إِنْ خَيْرًا إِنَّ خَيْرًا فَخَيْرٍ وَإِنَّ شَرْ فَشَرْ فَلْيَكْفُرْ الْكَافِرْ وَلْيَفْسُقْ الْفَاسِقْ وَزِنْدِيكْ وَالْمُلْحِدْ فَإِن فَإِنَّ أَمَامَهُ الْبَعْثِ وَالْنُشُورِ وَالْجَزَاءِ وَالْحِسَابِ أَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنُ الْمُتَّقِي الَّذِي يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَيَتَقَرَّبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ عَمَلَهُ لَنْ لَنْ يُضِيعَ فَإِنَّ هُنَاكَ مَوْعِدًا يُوَفِّيهِ اللَّهُ فِيهِ عَمَلَهُ وَيُضَاعَفُ لَهُ أَجْرُهُ وَيُؤْتِيهِ مَا لَمْ يَقَعْ فِي ظَنِّهِ وَحُسْبَانِهِ so finally, the Shaykh, he says here in the final paragraph, in the closing paragraph, he says, these are the evidences for the resurrection which have been confirmed and affirmed and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect whoever is in the graves and that he will recompense every one who's done an action, who's done a deed and he will re recompense them by the actions they did. If it's good, then it's good. If it's evil, then it's going to be evil. So if, if, if the person did good, then he's going to be rewarded with good. If he did evil, he's going to be recompensed with that evil that he did. So whoever disbelieved, so the, so, so the disbeliever will disbelieve. The kafir will disbelieve. The, uh, uh, the sinners, the, the sinners, they will, they, they'll be sinners. So the, the sinners who sin, they'll be sinners. They'll be, they, they will be recompensed with what they did. And likewise, heretics and, and the atheists, for indeed in front of them and what's to come is a resurrection and being brought back to life and being gathered and a recompense and uh, being accounted for al hisab as for the mu'min the believer the one who's god conscious the one who's god fearing and god is conscious of god and the and, and al mutaqi I'll, I'll bring a better translation of it um uh, from which i learned from different lessons is that, I can't remember the author now, if I could remember it would be great, but uh, I do remember the meaning So uh, of the translation of, of, of what the definition was of, of taqwa and al-mutaqi, the one who is upon that taqwa. And that is that uh, he is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's put it the best way I can put it, he is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever he is. Wherever he is, he is aware that Allah is watching him, that he's being watched. And Allah knows everything he does and he's doing, whether he's alone or with people. Uh, and also that this person, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he, he follows what he's been commanded. So whatever Allah has commanded, uh, commanded him with, that he carries out those commandments, those actions. And whatever Allah has, told, uh, has prohibited him from, then he uh, stays away from that. Um, and that is the more so sort of overall encompassing uh, definition of taqwa. Um, and not just saying that having is God fearing or God conscious only, but it's all of this, yeah, all together. Um, and so uh, the Sheikh says here um, that this person, the mu'min, the muttaqi, the mu'min, the person upon taqwa, then the one who worships Allah subhanahu wa taala and seeks nearness to Allah subhanahu wa taala, for indeed his actions and his deeds they won't be lost, and um, uh, there is an appointment. Uh, with him, uh, with his Lord, where he will be given uh, his full rewards and f pay, he'll be paid in full. His wages will be paid in full in terms of the good he used to do, right? 
and uh, and it will be doubled and tripled and quadrupled, etc., uh, up to the point of whatever Allah wishes to, uh, you know, enumerate these good deeds and actions, and his reward will be given to him, and nothing will be lost. Nothing will be lost for him. He will be given his reward in full. So the Shaykh finishes off with that, and uh, the next lesson we will uh, continue. The next lesson is, as you can see up here. Uh, is al hisab wal mizan so being account the the the, the account that's going to be so you know when will be brought to account so being brought to account and uh, al mizan the uh, the 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 scales the sheikh will go through that uh, and then i think after that we have another two or three lessons maximum within the book itself two chapters i think and then we finish the book inshallah and we'll move on to another book with ta'ala which we can discuss uh, closer to the time inshallah maybe in about two or three weeks so uh, we'll wrap up there, Barakallah Fiqh, and uh, uh, we'll continue next week around the same time. If there's any changes in the time, we'll let you know in advance, inshallah. Barakallah Fiqh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.